If this is what you're after, well, you're going to be disappointed. But if you want to understand right at the beginning of drawing the potential, the possibilities of crosshatching, if you want to understand a dozen different purposes we can use crosshatching for, all of which guide us in how to use it differently, if you want to understand why the question, what direction do I hatch in, is the wrong question to ask, then this is the video for you. So let's start. Don't be frightened at how complex some of these drawings are. These aren't drawings for beginners to do, but these are, I believe, very good drawings for beginners to start to understand how hatching can be used, what the possibilities are, because it's understanding this that will enable us to work out what direction is the best one to put these lines. But one of the first principles we can see here is to use hatching to show the underlying form. Whatever we're hatching, for whatever reason, the best direction of the line usually is one that in some way shows the underlying form in this mountain. If we look at the upper mountains and the horizontal hatching, it curves around reflecting the curved weathered shapes that run down the mountain. We see the principle here being applied to a range of different trees in the one drawing. Look at all of these trees, it would be easy for these to become a tangle of lines trying to outline branches and leaves and so forth. Instead, we've used hatching to suggest the overall form, the overall shape, the direction, the feel of each of these different types of trees. Different because of the way their branches hang, because of the way their leaves or needles hang and so forth. Even the hedge has its own hatching direction. We can be hatching the overall shape, not the small individual parts. If we look at the ground, see that the hatching's been done in a way, not just to represent the shadow that's being cast on the road surface, but also the roundedness of the road surface itself. And even the lines that have been put on in a way to overlap or have a gap that suggests where the ruts from the car wheels have worn a shallow track. We haven't just coloured in with the hatching, we've actually created part of what we're looking at with it. Sometimes we choose our line direction to bring clarity to what we're seeing. Notice that the trees in the background and the grass is approximately a vertical hatching. But on the tree trunk, the hatching is horizontal and this different direction, this very different direction, helps to emphasise the difference of the two, well, the three different objects that the hatching is involved with. So the context hatching lines that are around the hatching lines we're about to do is a significant consideration point trying to work out what is the best direction in this drawing for this subject to hatch in. In this yucca plant, there is nothing behind or below really that's hatched or cross-hatched to worry about, but you'll notice that the underside shade of the yucca plant and some of the shadows being cast at the center is horizontal. And that was a lot more fiddly and time consuming to do than if I'd done it vertically. But if I'd done it vertically, then the hatching lines would have got mixed up with the more vertical lines of the actual leaves themselves, defining the shapes of these large leaves. And then it would have just become a tangle of lines and we wouldn't have been able to work out what line was for what purpose. Visually, it would have been a confusion. So again, when we think what direction will we do our lines, we're thinking what will bring clarity regarding the lines I've already drawn, whether they're other hatching lines or whether they're outlines. Another consideration when we're drawing hatching and cross hatching lines is what sort of edges are we wanting this hatching to help create the appearance of, the effect of. If we look at these steps, these rough stone steps carefully, we can see that the hatching has not been brought up to the same straight point. By controlling where the hatching ends and even whether the hatching at the very end turns a slight bend to indicate a curved surface or whether it goes straight up and stops, by being intentional with where and how the lines have stopped, we've created a sense of a weathered edge that I think captures very well the reality. We can look at this again, not with hard stone, but with a hedge. If we look at this hedge at the upper right-hand side, we can see in the same way, 
we've combined where our hatching ends and how it ends with the marks that have been loosely put along the top to create the visual effect of the, the ruffle of the leaves in the light where they've been trimmed. Again, you can see there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's always what effect am I trying to create? And it doesn't matter whether the drawing is a complex scene or a very simple one, these principles are still the same. So it's helpful to learn to consider these options, these possibilities, even in the simplest of subjects. But in many ways, it's more easy to see them. They're more on display and the impact they have is easier to see in more complex drawings. This is a very important one to realize and to look for opportunities to use, and that's to use our hatching lines, not just the direction, but how we draw them to help create the effect, the illusion of distance on our two-dimensional sheet of paper. Notice how as the trees move further back, the hatching becomes lighter and the marks become thinner and more tentative, more sparse, in fact, as well. All of these help to, in many ways, create the feel of something further away. It doesn't have to be a tree. Whatever we're hatching, for whatever reason, can benefit from this technique. One of the ways we can use hatching is to make things pop forward, come towards us, feel closer. The dark hatching behind these columns has the effect of pushing them forward, which creates not just clarity, but a satisfying three-dimensional feel. The hatching for the dark bushes that are behind this iron railing fence in the front, where the really dark part of the hatching is, has been controlled to leave a, a halo effect around one side of the rails so that we not just can see them, but that the fence also feels like it's in front of those bushes behind, which is exactly the effect we want. And it's also helping to reinforce the sense of three dimensions by bringing some things closer to us. It's all with how we consider what hatching will bring about the effect I want. We have to work out in our mind first, what effect am I trying to create through my marks? And that will guide us into the best way to do those marks. In this drawing of an Australian Waratah, the hatching has been done on the leaves to create a sense of three dimensions to show their underlying form. Also representing the darker colour, the darker value that they are, and also to create a sense of three dimensions of the overall plant. So you can see here, putting into practice the, the lighter, simplified marks and values created on the far side of the plant compared to the leaves that are closest. Another thing to remember when we're using hatching and cross-hatching in our drawings is sometimes they are a far more satisfactory method or even in fact the only method of drawing certain subjects where trying to draw by using lines to define what we're seeing is just going to be impossible. Here are two drawings that show where there were very few outlines done before the hatching began and virtually the entire feel, the subjects, the light effects, the shadows, the edges, all of this almost was done through the hatching and not through drawing lines. Hatching is not something we add on at the end of the drawing. It can create almost the entire drawing. Again, in this example, we can see that the hatching really has created the scene. Very few lines, very few defining edges, but a lot of darks and lights that have been created by hatching in different ways in different combinations, creating different effects, and all of the effects and lines and marks together create the scene. It's important to remember that hatching lines can cover a wide range of drawing styles. They can be quite detailed and carefully drawn using a fine pen and create a fairly detailed effect of a tree. Or we can use a thicker line a quicker action, a rougher effect, and create a much more lively animated sketch of a very different type of tree. Or we could use this style with the same tree. It's not the subject, it's the overall visual effect we want our drawing to have. Once we work that out, 
regardless of how simple or complex the subject is, then that leads us into working out the best direction and way to hatch. These couple of drawings highlight the impact doing things differently with the same subject can have. These ruins of Whitby Abbey have the hatching pretty much in a horizontal direction, but curving where necessary around curved areas and trying to create an effect of weathering with an uneven edge in most places. But compare how this looks visually to the effect created if we do the lines the other direction. Now this is clearly a lighter, faster drawing, but the effect is still very bland compared to the intense weathering and stone-like feeling we get having taken more time but also drawn the lines horizontally. We created clarity in what we were looking at, whereas here we're confusing the hatching with vertical lines that are meant to be defining architecture. Here are two similar scenes to show how the hatching used in one has in a sense closed off the scene, but in the second it's opened it up, even though they are both very full, intense subjects. Here the hatch lines are very vertical, almost over the entire drawing. While there's clarity provided by the edges created and by the darkness of the values or the lightness of the values, it still creates a bit of a wall-like feel, which is perfect for the dense tangle of undergrowth of this subject. But in a different bush scene, one which has a bit of an open clearing and where we want to be able to feel the sense of moving backwards up the stairs and in the far distance, the hatching has been done very differently. The lines angle off in all sorts of directions to almost from the center of the drawing scatter us in different directions and therefore open up the space more. And there is a feel that this is a clearing even though there's a lot of density of line and of detail and of effects being created. You'll see pretty much everything we've talked about so far in this drawing on the right. Again, as a beginner you won't be drawing this, but to understand the possibilities mean that you can start to apply them even in simple subjects. Now we can use hatching to indicate what's called local colour, and that means simply the colour something is under natural, normal, average lighting conditions. So in this house front in Hobart, the concrete sills above and below each of the windows had a darker value. It looked darker than the colour of the walls. And so I've used hatching to capture the difference in colour, even though I'm drawing with black ink. Now in this house drawing, I've used hatching to indicate a darker value, a darker colour of the stonework that then the brickwork is put on top of. And of course, we can use hatching to represent shade and shadow. On this pine tree, we see shade and by shade, I mean the part of the tree or the object that the light can't reach because of the shape of the object is darker. And trees, tree canopies have a lot of shade and it's important to hatch in a way that helps us see the form, the overall form, the generalized form of the tree canopy. And we can also use hatching to represent shadow. Now shadow is where the light doesn't reach an object because another object is in the way casting a shadow on it. So we can see the shade on the tree canopy in this instance, but we can also see that that large canopy is casting a shadow on the ground. You'll notice I've hatched the shadow on the ground very different to how I've hatched the shade in the canopy different lines, horizontal lines to represent relatively flat earth, horizontal earth, and so forth. And it's darker because shadow is darker than shade. And just to show that hatching, that all of these principles of hatching really can apply to simple subjects as well, here's a 1930s lounge chair. And we can see that the line direction has been used to reinforce the underlying shape and angles of the object. We've been very careful with edges to indicate whether it's a sharp or, or a softer curve. We've used it to indicate subtlety in shade in the cushion. We've also used it to create a range of values to help define the form, especially those darker parts of the value 
on the right hand inner arm under the cover. So even though a subject is relatively simple, it doesn't mean we can't explore many of these possibilities when we draw. I think the most helpful thing for a beginner is to understand the possibilities of hatching and that they all come down to the personal choice of the artist and the effect they're trying to create. Don't have as your aim just to somehow copy the photo. Have a sense of an effect that you want your drawing to have and then think, what ways can I hatch? Paying attention to all of these sorts of things and any others that come up as you draw that will strengthen, that will create this effect that might even enable me to draw the impossible. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. I hope you found this interesting. If you're a beginner, don't be put off by how complex some of the drawings are. I use them because I think they show more clearly the underlying principles of the effects we can create, of the reasons we can have to hatch in one direction versus another. And I hope you really can see from this that to ask the question, what direction should I do my hatch lines in, as if there was an answer, is fairly pointless. And why repeating over and over again exercises on cubes and spheres is not going to help us at all when we go to draw a real life situation. We need to understand the possibilities of line direction, of combinations of line, and of the values and effects that are created by them, and then combine them all together in a way that shows clarity and depth and interest in our scene. But look, however you hatch, whatever you hatch, make sure you experiment. Remember, there's no right way and have fun. I'll see you next drawing. Bye.